Hi everybody, I hope that you're all doing really well. So today I am back to talk about the books that I am planning, hoping, to read by the end of 2021. I recently took stock of my TBR trolley and realised Mm, mm, mm. There, there are issues going on there. I have definitely taken advantage way too much of the fact that I now am in such proximity to charity shops, to bookshops than I ever have been before. So for somebody who constantly talks about the fact that they like to have a small TBR, I prefer to have as few books on my TBR as humanly possible. This is a lie because I currently have 72 books on my TBR, which is much more than I had at the beginning of the year. I can't remember what that number was, but I will put it on the screen for you. And uh, something's got to give there. I feel like the beginning of next year is going to be me doing a bit of a TBR tackle. Not completely giving up buying books because it's me. I'm way too tempted, but definitely trying to whittle that number down. I've said that many times before, why do I think that that's going to change this year? I don't know, but I have the motivation. And part of what I've decided to do in the interim before 2022 begins is that I have turned round all of the books that I definitely know that I don't want to read by the end of the year, which was kind of a hard decision to do. I've turned them round so that their pages are showing, which is something I've seen other people do on their bookshelves and I absolutely despise, but I feel like it's good for me with my TBR because it just highlights the books that I want to read right now. And then the books that I want to try and prioritise in the next few weeks have their spine shown. Showing. I will say there are way too many books here than I can actually feasibly read in the next five weeks but you know have to be an optimist about things and then when it gets to the new year we, we can tackle the TBR together it'll be fine Nah. So yeah, I thought I would go through those 16 books, I want to say, that I want to attempt to try and read by the end of the year. It's not going to happen. It is not going to happen. Uh, first off, we might as well start with the one that is least likely to happen, but I wanted to kind of, to be honest, I'm paying lip service to reading this book. It is one that I said back in 2020 that I will read it by the end of the year. 2021 will be the year that I read this book. It has not happened. It is not going to happen. But if I turned it round, I would feel like more of a failure than I already do. And that book is, of course, war and peace. It's not going to happen, but I feel like it's right there. I should try. I should put it face out on the top shelf of my TBR trolley, otherwise I definitely won't read it. So, uh, we try. We try. Next up we have Twelve Caesars by Mary Beard. This is a book that was recently published by the publisher that I work for, Princeton University Press. Obviously written by Mary Beard, quite a big deal for us. This is definitely one of our most anticipated books and I have dipped in and out of it and I went to see a talk that she did in Oxford and I thought it sounded absolutely fascinating. This is all about how we have utilised the image of the Caesars in our art and architecture through the past centuries and what that says about how we view power and I just think that's rather fascinating and because this is obviously a workbook I do want to try and get to it by the end of the year before all of our spring releases come out. A book that I have started and shamefully have not gotten very far with and I've been dipping in and out of this one all year has been That Glimpse of Truth, a hundred of the finest short stories ever written chosen by David Miller. This was one that was kindly gifted to me for my birthday from Rosie over at Sparkles Books and I did start reading one of these a day and I just didn't keep going. As you can see it's quite a chunky book so I feel like it's definitely not one that I'm going to finish before the end of the year but I I'd like to give a go. And then of course it wouldn't be an end of the year TBR without talking about a couple of Christmas ebooks. So for that I have got Last Christmas which is curated and introduced by Greg Wise and Emma Thompson. I think kind of inspired by the film. This is just a lot of different celebrities talking about their experiences with Christmas, like memorable Christmases that they've had. And then also we have The Penguin Book of Christmas Stories edited by Jessica Harrison. Just some classic and contemporary Christmas stories. So between these two I feel like I'll be very well served for Christmas. Then next up we have Cecily Neville, Mother of Kings by Amy Lysons. As you might already know, I read the fiction book Cecily by Annie Garthwaite back in August, I want to say, and I really enjoyed that. And because I was on such a high of reading about Cecily Neville, I wanted to read a non-fiction offering about her life. And so I would kind of like to read this before the end of the year, whilst I'm still in that kind of kick of reading about the Wars of the Roses, of reading about Cecily Neville's life. Not to say that I won't be interested in that in 2022, but I feel like this year is when I've been on a high for it, so should try and read it. Another book that I will be kicking myself if I don't finish it, and you should tell me off if I don't finish it by the end of the year, is Canute the North Sea King by Ryan Lavelle. This has been on many, many, many a TBR. This is the next instalment in the Penguin Monarch series, of which I am doing videos for, and I absolutely intend to keep this series ongoing. I feel like it's becoming a running joke. I do care about this series. I do want to do this series. What I'm scared about is scripting, filming, and editing those videos. The actual books themselves are fine, but I am a world-class procrastinator. I did actually 
actually start this when I was on holiday. I started scripting out a video from what I had read. So I just need to finish this. This is a book that is under 100 pages. It should not be hard to do. Got to read it. Next up, we have a sequel that I have been highly anticipating, which is Truth of the Divine by Lindsay Ellis. This is the follow up from Axiom's End, which came out last year. This was on my anticipated releases for autumn, I believe. This is all about the discovery of an alien presence on Earth. And the main character, Cora Sabino, is an intermediary. She is the only person who can really communicate with these aliens. And we're just continuing the story and seeing how things start to unravel. It's a very political series. Sci-fi is not my typical bag, but I'm a big fan of Lindsay Ellis's videos. And I really did enjoy Axiom's End when I read it. So interested to see the continuation of this story. Next up, getting into a couple of non-fiction books that I started in the last few months, but haven't yet finished. We have How To Be A Victorian by Ruth Goodman. I got about 92 pages into this. This is one of my Victoria books that I carried into non-fiction November, and I've still not picked up. I don't know why, because I was really enjoying it. And this book just takes you from dawn to dusk talking about the lifestyle of Victorians. Peppered in are Ruth Goodman's own experiences of living like a Victorian and she kind of gives her own advice on how you should deal with certain aspects of Victorian living and it's really interesting, really engaging, so I just need to continue it. We also have The King's Painter, The Life and Times of Hans Holbein by Franny Moyle. This is one that I was sent by the publishers and I was very grateful for. I'm about 160 pages into this. I think honestly the only reason that I've not continued on with this is because this is I think over... it's over 500 pages is long, it is very big and chunky and a big chunky hardback, so it's not the most ideal book to travel around with. But I was really enjoying it, there's some beautiful beautiful illustration and artwork in here. It's just a stunning book and it's a period of history that I love, so I've got to finish this. A bit of a random one that does have a bit of a Christmas theme to it is The Silent Stars Go By by Sally Nichols, and I'm really sorry but I've been way too well trained from seven years of secondary school choir and 18 years of going to church every Sunday to not follow on. But in thy dark street child the everlasting light, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. I'm sorry. This is a historical fiction book that I picked up kind of on a whim when I went to Daunt Books over the weekend. I believe it's set during the end of the First World War, going into 1919. From what I remember of the synopsis, this is all about a young couple who fell in love, Margot and Harry, but then Harry goes off to fight in the war, he ends up going missing, and then suddenly it's Christmas 1919, Margot has kind of moved on with her life, but then Harry comes back. And I don't know, but I feel like from the cover of the book, a child is going to be involved. Hmm. Ooh, what a mystery! But because it's set at Christmas, I want to read it now. Then two books that are themed together because they are both book club books that I need to read. Firstly, we have The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. This is the November pick for the I Should Have Read That Book Club. Coming to think of that, also The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue should be on this list because that is the December pick. Though, like Picture of Dorian Gray, it is a book that I have read already. Those are both rereads for me, so hopefully I should be able to blast them out quite quickly. But then that is my virtual book club. I have also just joined an in real life book club, which has just been set up with a bunch of my work friends. And this month we are reading Magpie Lane by Lucy Atkins. I think this is a bit of a crime, kind of creepy book. I think we picked it because it's set in Oxford and I know nothing about it, but looking forward to reading it and chatting about it with my work colleagues. And then finally, I've got three books here that I've kept out just because I know that I can find audiobooks for them on script. So if I'm really, really stuck with my reading, I can always listen to the audiobooks of these. They're not high priority, but I wanted to keep them out just in case. We have Anne Boleyn, 500 Years of Lies by Hayley Nolan. As we know, I'm a big fan of Tudor history. I'm a massive fan of Anne Boleyn. She is my favourite of the six wives. Don't at me, I know I'm basic. I've heard very mixed things about this. I've heard some negative reviews about this and that makes me even more intrigued to find out why. On a different tact we have Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. Bit of sci-fi, bit of history, bit of time travel. I'm intrigued. And then we have I'll Be There For You, The One About Friends by Kelsey Miller. This is non-fiction recounting the production, the history of the show Friends, which is one of my favourite shows of all time. So there we go, those are all of the books that I am way too optimistically thinking that I might be able to get to before the end of the year. It's not going to happen, but we live in hope. Do let me know if the books that are on your personal TBR for the end of the year, and also let me know if you've read any of the books that I've spoken about today. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you're having a fantastic, fantastic day, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Bye.